Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. It's time now for Arise Top 5. And we've saved you the stress of trying to figure out who the highest paid footballers in the world are. We've got you covered. So this is the top five and we're starting with number five and that is Brazilian footballer Oscar dos Santos, more simply known as Oscar. He joins this list as the top paid footballer. Playing for Shanghai SIPG, Oscar left Chelsea to earn a whopping 21.1 million pounds salary. He made the move over a year ago and as you can see, he is raking in the big box. Ooh, yes, next up we have Chilean-born Manchester United star Alexis Sanchez. This deal that he made will be sealed once the 30-year-old completes his move to Old Trafford, making him the fourth highest paid player in Premier League, earning as high as £450,000 a week. And that was the highest paid, by the way, in Premier League. So for those of you who need help with the math, that's £23.4 pounds a year. Yeah, I know what my children are going to be doing. Well, making number three on this list is Brazilian elite star Neymar de Silva Santos Jr. Neymar's transfer from Barcelona to Paris Saint-Germain had everyone gasping last summer in the world of sports. The 25-year-old phenomena became the world's most expensive footballer of all time. He currently makes up to 31.7 million pounds. Yeah. I'm having prompter issues. Okay, and making the number four spot is Carlos Tevez. Even though Tevez has moved to Boca Junior, meaning he's not earning as much as he did before, the former Man United and Man City star earns a whopping 33.5 million pounds. And I can't imagine he will be complaining. And at top of the countdown is mega superstar Barcelona's Lionel Messi. He can be considered one of the greatest of all times and also has the salary to match. He rakes in 40.5 million pounds a year. I don't know about you, but I can't wait to see him play for Argentina at this year's World Cup. And that's been it for our eyes top five. Stay with us as we'll be bringing you all you need to know about World Cup 2018. Don't go away. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. I am Toyosi Etim F. Young. Now, the World Cup is about a month away, and interest for the game has definitely picked up. This will be the first World Cup held in Europe since the 2006 tournament in Germany, and the first ever to be held in Eastern Europe. Defending champions Germany will be there, and Iceland and Panama will both be making their first World Cup appearance. What can we expect from them? Aaron Akerjala is our Rise Sports anchor, and he'll be answering all your questions and my questions about the World Cup. Welcome to the morning show, Aaron. Yes, it's good to be here today. Good yeah, to making, have you on our couch. Yeah, making my debut, you know. Making your debut on the morning show, <laughs> hey, just like Iceland and Panama yeah. at the World Cup. Yeah, Panama actually they threw a celebration declared a public holiday no. when they qualified for the first time to the World Cup. So, wow. Yeah. So it's that huge. What, so what, 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 what are your expectations for them? What's the general public expectation of their performance um, no, at the World Cup? Uh, for Panama, they might just be thinking that, OK, let's just go out and turn. The team everyone is looking out for is Iceland. They're very small. Yeah. I think just short, just a little bit above 300,000 people in Iceland. Right. And we hear that about 20% of them have already asked for tickets for the World Cup. Oh, wow. And they were the surprise package when they played the last tournament, Euro 2016. They're in Nigeria's group. So wow. they are hoping that they can actually do the same. If they can replicate what they did in their last tournament in Euro 2016, trust me, it will be something else. That everybody is always, everybody, they, they carry that aura about them. Yeah. yeah. Because they have this Viking club they always do after their, like. after their, celeb after their matches where oh. they go to the stadium in front of the stand and everybody starts clapping over there. Uh, it's, it's electric, trust me. Ooh. So Iceland is one of the, they are the dark horses. They, I don't think they will ever win the tournament, but <laughs> people are just keeping an eye that you maybe, just so, something. You'll be surprised. So who is in that group as well? It's Iceland, Nigeria. Nigeria. Argentina. Oh. Ah. Now this is where it gets dicey. Yeah. Then Croatia. It's called okay. the group of death. I don't know. I, I wow. Don't know. Wow. So who, who do you think?
think are the major contenders? Who who is who are people bet and sports betting now? We'll talk about that. But who are the major contenders now um, for the World Cup? Without a doubt, um, Germany are the defending champions. Yeah. All right, the Dimashaf will want to go there again and see if they can actually do it. No one has actually done it since 58 and 62 when mm. Brazil won it back to back. Back to back. So Germany will want to do that. Okay. But certainly the likes of Spain, they're actually looking like a reinvigorated team. Of course, Brazil, who have won the most tournament, of course, six in the rows. I mean, six altogether. Six altogether. altogether. We want to actually make a statement again. So we look at this thing. Those are the top teams, basically. Then you have the outsiders like Argentina, who always fail at the big, to deliver the biggest stage. Yeah. Belgium also, outsiders, who also have failed to deliver the biggest stages. They've got the players, but something always happens, and they always capitulate at the last minute. What I'm not hearing is Nigeria. Oh. Is there any reason for this? <laughs> and it's so sad. It's so sad, Stephen Keshi, may his soul rest in peace. You know, yeah, we have a man. new coach True. now. Um, so do you think this coach will deliver... <laughs> um, okay, if I to be sincere, um, not to talk from my heart, but from my head. All right, um, Nigeria is in the category of the Icelands of this world. That I'm serious. How did we get there? It's 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 that it's that good. Let's put it that way. Okay. It's <laughs> being that we we uh, this we I think we boast of the youngest team going into the World Cup. Okay. Uh, 4.5, that's the median age going to the World Cup. So that's actually very, very good. Okay. But at the same time, you and I know this, when you want to win um, a very huge tournament like the World Cup, you need experience. Ah. So that's by just playing a little bit for Nigeria. But we, everybody's getting excited yeah. because we have players that are doing great things around the world. Alexander Iwobi is on one side. We've got Kelechi and Acho on the other side. And we have more... Uh, more mixed Nigerians mm. than ever before. Pre previously, when Stevie Keshi played for the Super Eagles, 95% yeah. 90, of them were born, Pure. bred in Nigeria. Raised, yeah. When Stevie Keshi led the Super Eagles, 90% of them were born and bred here. But this time around, um, General Trump has gone out, looked for people that have allegiances to Nigeria. Maybe for, maybe mother was Nigerian, the father was a Nigerian, <laughs> and has brought them together. They are more now wow. than the ones that were brought here. It's almost looking like what happened, uh, what is happening to France. I was going to talk about <laughs> France. I looked at France's team. I yeah. looked at the picture of the, of, of, the, of, the, of the team, and I just saw black people. And I'm thinking, hmm. Where did all the, where did they get all these people from? So these are people they just, from like Cameroon and um, Ivory Coast, Coast and all these places. Algeria, just name it all. They they just it's a melting pot for <laughs> for football, so to speak. Mm. They, I think and that has helped France a lot. And Fra okay, France is another team that a lot of people will be looking at to say maybe just maybe if the stars are lying for them, they should be able to do it because those are the teams. These four teams I mentioned. Brazil, France, Spain, Spain and, and Germany. Germany. They have the strongest squads going into the tournament. England? Ah, well, England's... England uh, I, I got the truth. England has a solid team. Why is nobody it's, talking about England? The point is, England, uh, how do I put it? They, they flatter to deceive. Flatter to deceive? That's the, that's the truth. Interesting. That's the truth. Uh, but there's one... I don't know if this will work this time around because... There is one record in the World Cup that any country that has won the World Cup has not won it with a foreign coach. Ah. So maybe there are people are saying that maybe now England have for the first time going to World Cup in a long time they have a coach who is English. Okay. So just maybe. Maybe this is the, the, the magic <laughs> I, I, potion they I, need. Just maybe. I don't think so. But uh, England will still flatter to deceive once again. Flatter to deceive. Okay. So let's talk about everything that has been happening with Russia. Yeah. Moving a bit to politics, just a little now. Do you think this would affect anything? I mean, it's sad that you, the United States did not qualify, and I think they did a brilliant job the last time I saw them. Yes. The United. The, their this is the first time since '86 they didn't qualify. Oh, that's 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 a shame. That's it's a shame. Big shame. Yeah, it's a big shame. But no. So with all the chemical weapons allegations, um, diplomats being expelled from different countries around the world. Yeah. Do you think it would affect the mood of the World Cup? No, the World Cup, how, how do I put it? The World Cup is, the, is arguably the biggest tournament in the world. Mm. They say over, um, over close to about, I think over close to about a billion people 
all right, tuned in in the course of, wow. that was for 2014. Okay. So it's, it's that big, it's that huge, it's that rich. People turn out in mass to want to watch it because it's not about the country that is hosting as it's much as the people that right. are coming to participate. Right. And that's why FIFA, they pride themselves, they do everything possible to ensure that any team that is coming is comfortable, they get the very best of treatments, all right, before during and even after the World Cup. Mm. So that everybody's happy, they have a beautiful tournament because if you have happy players, yeah. certainly you have uh, players that would actually deliver the best. And if they deliver the best, the fans are happy, everybody's happy, the sponsors are happy. The sponsors are <laughs> definitely happy. <laughs> and then everybody goes home happy. So yeah. it's, it's still the biggest tournament in the world, without a doubt. Yeah. Without yeah. a doubt. I don't think uh, the Americans might want to differ, they'll say the Super Bowl, this, that, that. that. Mm. Nah, the World Cup. The number of people that just come to think of it, they even have the number of people that have actually put in tickets. It's almost okay. For example, let me just put it this way: one hundred seventy-six thousand people actually volunteered to actually to volunteer to for the World Cup, and they only just needed like probably like sixty thousand. One seventy-six thousand volunteered. Yeah. Wow. Around the world, not just yeah, from Russia. Yeah, yeah. Somebody is actually coming all the way from. England yeah. to Russia, someone is coming all the way from Africa yeah. to Russia on their own expense mm. just because they feel they want to be part of history. That's how it is. Oh, amazing. So what are, what, what, what are some things people can do in Russia apart from... Because first of all, I don't know that everybody is going to be making it to the stadiums. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what are some fun things people tend to do at events like this and in the country, in the city? What are some things they tend to do? Um, Although the point is this, I think Russia they've been trying to sanitize because at the the ugly side of tournaments like this is that ultras, those that actually take their fanatism of football to the yeah. next level, would always want to fight you or always want to disrupt things. But they've tried to calm everybody down that they have police forces that can do that. Russia is a beautiful country, mm. and of course they've got some. Like, like when you look at the Kremlin, for example, all right, and also the Hagen Museum. These are places that people will want to go to. And more importantly, there are always des designated FIFA fan sites right. yes, around countries, I mean, around cities that will be hosting several, several matches. So okay. you, you can just sit down there with people from other countries, you just get to have a drink with them, yeah. eat good food. It, it, it's this been a while. Like you're <laughs> 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 you know, the beautiful thing is this, it's Europe. So it's going to yeah. be, our uh, movement will be easy. So people, right. a lot of people will actually come in. And some people, and Russia is kind of big. Yeah, Russia is huge in terms of land. Yes, yeah, so Russia, Russia is kind of yeah. big because they are saying that, for example, the distance between um, one of the stadiums, the Kanegra Stadium, to another stadium is almost the distance from London to Moscow. Wow. So, so you might just need to just stay where you want to, where you are, ah. and enjoy yourself. But and the stadiums are scattered across. Yes, they're across. Yes, they're so scattered. It's not like everything the length and breadth. One... They're not. Mm. They're not clustered in one place. They are scattered across about twelve stadiums. So they're yeah. scattered across. All right, the north, them, the north. But I think there are some in the south. Those are the ones that are farther away. Mm. So let's see. It's gonna be fun. It, yeah. it looks. It looks like it. You're already getting <laughs> really, really, really pumped up about it now. But do you see the World Cup coming back to Africa? Anytime soon. Ah, now nah, this is where now you're talking. <laughs> now you you were saying poli this is not where the politics is because you and I know there's Donald Trump. Um, a lot of a lot of talks about the 2026 World Cup yes. and the bid is already going on. Yes. A lot of politicking is already going on and Morocco want to host the World Cup. Ah, Every that's a that's a good spot. Yes, that's it a good is. Spot. That's yes, a good it goes. Yeah, of course, everybody, anybody. If you've been to Morocco, you know mm. that Morocco is at Marrakesh. Beautiful city, beautiful city. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, it's close to the close to the river. You can just oh, you can just be looking at Spain from one side of Morocco. Yeah. It's, like, it's beautiful. But nevertheless, the US want to host it, and Donald Trump is already arm twisting Africans. I say that we give you aid. You <laughs> so must you support us. <laughs> <laughs> but I but I think I think I am praying that Morocco actually host the World Cup yeah. because when South Africa did. Um, they actually did justice to the they World did, Cup. They did. So they made us proud. They made all Africans massive. Ah, proud to be African. Yeah, that's massive. Africa hosted the World Cup. And Morocco, if you'd ask me, I think they are, they are better organized than South Africa. Just yeah. my own opinion. Okay. okay. And so I feel that if they actually do that, they might actually take it to another level. Okay. So beautiful. It's been amazing talking to you, Aaron. How do we prevent our players from absconding? 
in Russia. No, the, that, the, that, 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 the truth is this. The beautiful part of it is that most of the players that are going, yeah, are because ah, they are, they they are, are biracial, they are so they don't need to, they don't they, need they, to stay they, back. They, but everybody that is going to the World Cup, the beautiful thing about the World Cup is an opportunity to showcase yourself. Right. So anybody going to the World Cup is knowing that I might have, I might not be in the best of clubs right now, but this is an opportunity to tell my potential suitors that I am this good mm. because all eyes, it's a sign of show of eyes that will be on the walk. Yeah. So everybody wants to use this as an opportunity to showcase what they are, what they have and who they are. Yeah, amazing, so amazing, Aaron. It's been great talking to you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Stay here with us. We'll be talking teams and why we see Nigerians cheering foreign teams more than our own team here at home. Don't go away.